Yo, welcome back to the Shooters Podcast. I'm your host, uh, Brandon Shotman. On the Shooters Podcast, we talk about the business behind shooting, right? So the business of photography and videography. Um, I got a special guest today, all right? Sure. So, <laughs> for sure. Uh, this is my brother, man, uh, brother mentor, uh, Derek Harper Sr. So for those of you guys who don't know, right, um, I met Derek um, close to four years ago, man, and he actually, uh, he's one of the reasons how and why I uh, scale my business. I wanted to scale my business, I just didn't know how to do it. Not only did I scale my business, but I figured out a way to automate the business just by knowing this brother here, man. Derek, what's up, brother? Man, what's good with you? What's goody? Well, that's good. What, yeah, that's what I say, what's good? Man, I'm glad, you, glad I made this happen, I, brother. But you gave me too much credit, though. You say you man, don't man. know if you will have the whole business side if it wasn't for me. Yeah. You know, I can't take credit for success mm -hmm. if I don't take the blame for other people's failure, right? Mm -hmm. So it took a special skill set and a special execution mindset mm -hmm. to be able, you know, to be where you at. Because people get info all the time and they don't execute. Right, right. So therefore, then they just information hoard, but they don't act on it. So, you know, I just want to give you kudos, man, for like making it happen yeah. and um, taking a play and then actually uh, winning the game with it. So that's big, bro. Sure. Man, um, we out here in uh, Dubai, beautiful city Love of it. Uh, Dubai, man. What a, we just out here in Mastermind, man. Got some of our rich, I call them our, our rich friends, okay? <laughs> First of all, I'm still trying to get the, uh, you know, the food, I'm trying to get the food stamps, but back to 50-50 again, because <laughs> they they're doing 60-40 now, I'm trying to go back and do the 50-50. Oh, they right? bougie. <laughs> yeah, then it, then it came up. Oh, then man. Then it came up. Yeah. So listen, man, um, basically what I do here, man, on mm -hmm. the podcast is, it's strictly for photographers and videographers, Okay. But I didn't have, like when I got started, I didn't have any type of mentorship or anything that when I first got started. Right. So the only way for me to actually build a photography videography business was to hang around business owners. Right. Right? right. So I started hanging around, you start hanging around other people, and that's mm -hmm. when I learned actually how to run a business. Yep. So I'm creating a podcast just to help other photography videographers do the same thing. Oh, that's dope. So now, with that being said, I want to just ask you a couple of questions about um, um, entrepreneurship. Okay. So that way people can learn from an actual, you know, eight-figure business owner so they can figure out if you are a photographer, figure out if you just can start. That way they can have a, a better mindset to gotcha. be able to grow and scale their business. That's the whole purpose of the podcast. Okay. All right. Gotcha. That's what we're doing. So, uh, if you're ready to get this thing popping, let me jump right into it. I got a couple of questions. It ain't many. About four. All right. All right. A strong four. A strong four. And a possible. And, maybe and, a, and maybe a, a follow-up. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Gotcha. So listen, I want to, um, first, I want to let everybody know before I even get to my first question, just who is... Um, who is Derek Harper? Just tell me a little bit about him. Somebody. You know, every time I'm on a podcast, I hate answering that question. I got you covered. So listen, hey, Derek, Harper, <laughs> Derek is a uh, is an eight figure uh, business owner. Started out in um, credit repair. Actually, this most of before he started military, then went to credit repair. Mm -hmm. I mean, hit seven figures in that. And now he only focuses on um, growing and scaling other people's businesses. No matter right. what business you're in, uh, he kept to scale it, transfer everything. Um, you know, overseas, you can have overseas workers. Just automate your business, man. Help mm -hmm. create businesses in a box and things like that. People pay this guy lots and lots of money. Yep. A lot. How do we say a lot? How do we, like, I know 217 say a lot. A What's whole lot. A whole lot. Yeah, yeah, Okay. Yeah. So just to be able to coach and just get one-on-one -on -one advice and mentorship. So um, any other accolades you want to throw out there? That's it, bro. Like, it ain't even about me at this point. Okay. You know, I, done, I done did enough in life to where it ain't about me, right? Google My it. whole goal Basically is Google. to, like, get... I want people to be Google, mm -hmm. right? I want their businesses to be Google. Like, yeah. I'm good. So mm -hmm. it's like, I ain't even worried about me no more. So the yeah. whole thing is, I'm the person that can help a person find a vision, mm -hmm. build it, organize, document, delegate it, and then walk away into their freedom. So if you want freedom, then you don't need to worry about me, but I can help you get that, something like that. Let's get it, okay. So here's, here's my first question, brother. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you get started? In entrepreneurship. Like everybody else gets started, bro. They have a problem, right? Right. They overcome the problem, yeah. and then they realize other people got the same problem. Mm -hmm. And now you found a solution, yeah, right. and then now I can actually help other people with the solution. Mm -hmm. So that was actually, I got in a credit repair first, right? Mm -hmm. So me and, you know, me and my um, wife went through some things, mm -hmm. and you know, you go in the military, they give you everything. So sure. we basically lost the house and the car. Right. But when we lost the house and the car, nothing's going to teach you to go, go get it. Mm -hmm. You know, that yeah. procrastination stop when you got to make something happen. For sure. So that's when we decide, or that's when I decide, I'm going to read up on the laws and read up on my rights. Because mm -hmm. you know everybody, like, they slip and fall. I got rights, I'm going to sue. <laughs> so I'm reading to make sure, you can you get them people to be like, hey, man, they might have did something wrong, but yeah. you don't know what it is, true, right? And I was true. like, hey, there's a little ring to it. Yeah. So I start reading, and I realized, like, the uh, 
I didn't have a real contract in the mortgage I had because it was mm. a RESPA violation. So I read it, I can get that deleted. Mm. And then, you know, long story short, no such thing as a repo when you go to the dealer and then somebody else finance it. Like yeah. if you go to the dealer, they Santander finance and all that. Yeah. They can't repo because Santander never had possession of it because the dealer sold the contract. Mm. Long story short though, um, I researched it. Right. And then I realized, man, people got problems. Mm -hmm. If I didn't know this, how many other people didn't know it, right? True. So therefore I said, let me help other people. Yeah. And so, you know, I just started posting out there and just telling people about my story. And I'm like, man, I got a repo, man. Can you yeah. look into my stuff? Yeah. I got a foreclosure and I monetized, turned it into a business. Wow. It blew up too, True. but it outgrew me and I didn't have the systems and stuff in place for it. So I got started, mm -hmm. everything was booming good, mm -hmm. right? You know, and then I had the whole military thing. I was doing it for free for the military members and all that and just blew up. No systems in place. Though. So I had a business, mm -hmm. but it wasn't a business. It was just me mm -hmm. um, working for myself. Why did you, when you was in the military, why did you start to do it like for free for the military members? Well, cause you know, when you're in the military, man, you, the airmen against drunk driving and you yeah. know, you're trying to get ranked. You're yeah. trying to rank up fast, but you know, I figure if I'm already serving people, mm -hmm. I went in the military to, you know, the air force is going to educate me to serve people with. Yeah. And I figured, why not save the military money yeah. by helping the people get keep their top secret? Because mm -hmm. if your credit bag, you yeah. don't get your top secret. Yeah. So therefore, and I started learning about other bureaus and all of that True. through there, but I started fixing their stuff so that they can keep their top secret clearance or their secret clearance and keep their job. Yeah. And so it helped me win like Airman of the Year, all kind of awards and stuff, because yeah. what I did is I saved money. But So by doing, do you think that helped you like in your success by doing like starting off doing stuff for like, Free? Free and serving or? Well, because I started out, it wasn't about the money. Yeah. Right? So I think in anything, man, when you solve your own problem mm -hmm. and then realize that you can do one or two things, you can say, I'm good, forget everybody else. Or you can say, man, I wonder does the world know this? Mm -hmm. Right? So like when you was telling your story about how you got into videography, you did it, you started in music and you said, let me figure out a solution because nobody else can do it the way I want it done. True. But then you realize everybody else had that problem. True. Now it's a business. Absolutely. Right? And then now you turn that business into a program and into an empire. True. So those are the same steps that people should take. But I think the only step that stopped people from building that empire mm -hmm. is how they came into it. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you go into a relationship lying to a woman, yep. then when you get serious and you know it's time to commit, and she realized you're gonna lie about everything. Y'all gonna stay together? Foundation wasn't right. Sure, yeah. So it's the same thing of going into a business without a real passion of helping people not the right way because when it gets crunch time, when it's time to develop and go into that next level, go through the struggles, you gonna abandon that because you went for the money and you ain't really got a true passion to help people. Mm -hmm. So I think that doing stuff free shows passion, but then you run into that roadblock of, all right, I can't pour from an empty cup. Now yeah. I got to really turn this into a business because yeah. I can help people by the thousands, but mm -hmm. I got to be able to create a way that's going to take care of me and my family so that I can do that without suffering myself because mm -hmm. I can't pour from an empty cup. That's but real. listen, what was the um, turning point in your life? Um, man, it was a lot of them. Okay. Like, which one? <laughs> I had so many that yeah. I don't even um, know where to start on that. I guess let's start with, like, the uh, the first ones. Like, let's start with the early ones that, like, when before entrepreneurship or in entrepreneurship, in entrepreneurship. okay gotcha because like it no, was some stuff let's do let's go before because these are people people watching it they're probably not in entrepreneurship yet so they're trying to find out what what their aha moments could potentially look like yeah it's when i realized i was lazy yeah because you don't know you lazy right, for sure. and then i really i ain't i i'm so it's not really an ego yeah i just hate people telling me what to do sure. and i gotta do it right right and so it's kind of like I don't want to equate it to like slavery, True. but it's make me look at, so calling somebody a boss. Yeah. Hey, what's up boss, man? You mm -hmm. know, I, I just own know. It's not an ego thing. I'm calling you a boss. And then I got to mm -hmm. ask you to pay, take time off to be with my family. I got to mm -hmm. ask you to put in leave. I got to ask you to do all that. Mm -hmm. So when I was in the military, I realized that I don't really like nobody yelling at me and kind of like you own me at that point. Yeah, for sure. And so that turned me off to the whole thing. And I realized that if I don't put something in place for myself, nobody else will. Mm. So um, I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but mm. I didn't know what it was. So the yeah. turning point is what I talked about, losing yeah. um, everything. And it taught me two things. It taught me that when God puts you through some things, he's trusting you with the answer. Mm -hmm. 
And so he's trusting you with the struggle because he knows that when you get out of that struggle, you're going to be able to bless other people with it. And that's what I got. So I didn't only get the everybody need help, but I got the I was chose to actually deal with that struggle to be able to trust people with it. Oh, well, he could trust me with it to be able to help people with it. And once it started turning around and I saw that people was getting homes, people was getting like credit cards, they was getting cars, they was uh, starting their businesses, they was doing a lot of stuff, man. People was even getting credit cards, using the, the money out of the credit cards to play the stock market, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, 18 month return, 18 month 0% interest, and then I created wealth off of the stock market and then paid it all off before mm -hmm a lot of stuff so when i start seeing that i'm like man we really changing the world True. and then i looked at the bank account and, and it matched yeah so and i was like man you mean to tell me that i can do a 10 and this at that time i'm like i, I did a ten thousand dollar day and i'm like oh bro i ain't never going back to work for nobody <laughs> so you did i did a ten thousand dollar day and then right. i'm getting testimonies of people like oh my god you changed my life right. so and it was this one woman during that process who had just went through a divorce she was a stewardess right mm -hmm. real dope um, but her husband had left her. Mm -hmm. All the credit and everything was in his name, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, he left another woman, just something crazy, but she had two boys mm -hmm. that she had to still take care of. She was stressed out, depressed going through it, right? Mm -hmm. So, cause you don't know when a person get distressed, I don't know, they might slit their wrist, they might sure. kill themselves, they might end it all. Yeah. So when she got her house yeah. and then got her dream car, mm -hmm. right? And came and called me crying about how I changed her life because she was going to end it all. Yeah. That's when I was like, ain't no telling who else going through this. So I was stuck at that point. It's a wrap. What up, man? Change people's lives, bro. Change people's lives. All right, cool. What is your, what is your re relationship with photo and video? And what was your most like memorable photo? Or video? Man, you, believe it or not. So mm -hmm. I didn't know the value of um, photography and videography mm -hmm. um, because I was doing dope stuff. One mm -hmm. thing I always been good at is knowing how to make money. Yeah knowing how to build a successful business. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I realized is people who knew less than me or who were newer than me were coming around me getting paid higher because people was like, wow, they're amazing. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I'm cold with this. Yeah. They how, ain't how better in the world. And I realized yeah. that they were putting out content. So it's like, the, you know, you do amazing stuff, yeah. but the world don't see it. Mm. So um, I met this guy, his name was Brandon. Um, Dixon, it, he changed his last name to shot me, right? But um, believe it or not, I met him through Ken. Mm -hmm. So I was supposed to meet um, somebody, you know, at a, um, I was supposed to actually meet David, uh, good, you know, uh, David Shans, dope dude. Um, and I met you first, yeah. like we was waiting on David and Ken had set up the meeting and all that. And me and you hit it off. Yeah. We just start talking, blah, blah, blah. And then um, I still didn't know what you did. Sure. And I was like, man, dude, funny. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> You was like, man, dang, that's dope what you're talking about. Yeah. Like, why I don't know you? Yeah. And at first I was like, I ain't really offended. Yeah. I only I had like a few thousand followers or something, but yeah. I didn't know what a brand was. True. I just knew about giving value, going live, giving value, going live. Mm -hmm. Right? And that yeah. was it. And then you was like, man, bro. Um, and remember, I was like, hey, I'm speaking at this conference that yeah. they didn't pay me for. And you like, oh, that's dope. You got an audience of 700 people you're speaking to? Yeah. That was big for me at that yeah. point, right? But I wasn't getting paid, you know? And yeah. then you was like, well, what are you gonna do with the people? And yeah. I ain't have an answer. True. So you was like, bro, don't take no more conferences. Yeah. And I was like, what? He was like, don't take no more speaking gig. This is what we gonna do. Because at that time, I was like, I can help you build some business stuff out and sure. you ain't got to be the shooter. And you're like, well, I can help you build your brand. Sure. Remember that, that raggedy deal we did? We was like, we're going to do like a 15 or 20 percent. It, it was it went all wrong. Yeah, we, Michelle. Yeah, Michelle. <laughs> it was yeah, funny, that's man. crazy. So we were trying to um, do like a percentage. Percentage of like some media stuff. We was just yeah. out. We was like, forget we it. We're going to work together, well, right? We knew we wanted to create something. We, we, we knew something. it was going to work together. Yeah. We just ain't know how. Yeah, for sure. And then so you start coming to the office recording me. Yeah. And the crazy thing about it is my first paid gig that I demanded um, because you put media behind me, you actually documented the one that I was speaking at yep. and it made me look like I was just that dude, yep. right? And then the next paid gig or my first actual paid gig, so I didn't have to go up and take $200. My first paid gig after you took over was 15 grand. True. So the difference between uh, not having a videographer was the difference between me not only charging and demanding 15 grand but i made over 100 grand off of that conference from mentorship and coaching yeah. signups yeah. right um because the people saw me online they saw my brand so mm -hmm. i don't even like when people say videographer or photographer i call them 
vision coaches, right? True. Because they create the vision True. because people I day like to that. day. Vision coach. Sounds, yeah, sounds it's a saucy. vision coach. You see the vision. Saucy. Well, you bring that vision to life. Yeah. So the whole goal is the world seeing your I, you know, seeing your mission through your eyes, yeah. but through the lens. True. So the lens is kind of like them being able to like tap into what you're doing, bringing your greatness out. True. And I don't think a person has a brand without. So to answer your question, my relationship with videography and photography is everything and nobody has a brand without it. Mm. Cause we do stuff, we do dope sure. stuff daily, yeah, man, but just the world don't see it. it. So it's kind of like you get uh, to watch people that's less you know, that's why the marketers are winning. If mm -hmm. you realize most of the people who dominate in their industry mm -hmm. are not the, they, they not the expert in the industry. True. They give the wrong information 90% of the time. Yeah. Take every industry, yeah. take the top three biggest people in that industry with following, mm -hmm. and I guarantee you I can probably point out that nine out of 10 things they say about whatever they talking about right. is wrong. Wow. That's crazy. That's the truth. Marketers are winning. Yeah. because of they're content and video on, and that but they're not the experts but people if they see you over and over yeah then they're gonna automatically i thank you the expert because your content is out there in the forefront content's how to win well so content is a way to bring nobody that to somebody research yeah. won't yeah a person can research and give more and more content they can get they can give all the game yeah or you know more and more info mm -hmm. but if they don't have the content then it's only five people you're gonna have five people like bro you the goat, five people say you the goat. but the other ninety five thousand nine hundred and ninety five yeah. or ninety nine you know yeah. out of a hundred thousand don't know who the heck you are so they like all right let's do a cold yeah. now you one to one and you begging people to share your stuff and all that yeah. so uh you know and it's kind of like if you're all your content is like shot on a phone. You don't know the right settings and it look raggedy and yeah. blur is dark and all that. Nobody yeah. going to take the time. I didn't understand the fact, the difference between having a professionally looking photo, mm -hmm. video, yeah. and just doing it from my phone all the time brings a different audience in as well. Because now I can demand a really high price because I have a lot, a lot of content True. because people can see the content and say, oh, he invests a lot of money in that content, mm -hmm. which means he take his brand serious. So if he take it serious, True. maybe I need to take it serious. True. Like, like that's kind of like the Gary Vee effect. Yeah. Like when you see Gary Vee shooting all this content, everybody wants to be like Gary Vee. But they don't even know. Like, if you ask yeah. out, out of 100 people, you say, well, what does Gary Vee really do? I don't know, but I see him all the time. True. No, that is yeah. it's real. You got the media group. That's uh, he'd be having a whole bunch of meetings. But see, you did the research to find that he had the media group. Ninety-nine percent of the people don't know Gary Vee got the media group. They yeah. just see him all the time. That's true. We do see him a lot. Yeah. I bet somebody gonna be like, dang, I didn't even know he had like watching this right now. They yeah. gonna be like, I ain't even know he had a media group. Let me group. go check it out right now. I, I hope they put that in the comments if yeah. they really didn't know what's his media group now. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, for real. I ain't going to say the name. I'm just letting them just see if they can. That's what I'm saying. Them. But I guarantee you, somebody going to come in and be like, man, you're right. But I do see dude all the time. I do see him. Yeah. He'd be coaching on some other stuff. He'd just be like, what is this? I'm here. But even outside of that, like, is that it? I don't I'm, know. If that's on, I, we don't know. We don't know. But he here. He here. He yeah, in front of the joint. Yeah. Got the, he got the videos popping up and all that. Yeah. That's crazy. You can't miss him. On no platform, you cannot miss him. But let me tell you, what can shooters, what can shooters do, photographers or videographers, mm -hmm. what can they do to better their uh business mm -hmm. and create just a better business model you know what's funny so a lot of people ask that question in every industry sure. even more than shooters but definitely shooters sure. right so i think it's more than videographers it's just business owners period right sure. but definitely videographers right and because videographers. videographers and photographers mm -hmm. can find a flaw in anything more than anybody in this world sure. so if you take a credit repair business owner right mm -hmm. the only client that they can get is people who need credit repair true right but if you take a videographer think about how many industries they can tap into that chef out there that you know can cook but don't nobody book them for to, to cater events because they don't have content mm -hmm. now they got ten thousand people that they following and you know they posting pictures of they food with just a phone mm -hmm. right yeah. no presentation no nothing yeah. we don't know if it look good or not True. so a videographer or a photographer can come in and say hey let's really make that presentation right because i see the vision behind that let's bring it to life mm -hmm. right so now what i think a lot of people are missing in videography and photography something that i saw you always do but the other people don't yeah. they go into a business thinking about and if you ask nine out of ten of them yeah. Hey, well, what are you, what you trying to do in the first year? I'm trying to make a hundred grand. So your first thing, your first whole goal, you mean to tell me you're trying to make money? Dang. Your whole goal, like yeah. out of all, out of everything, you had one job. Yeah. 
and Your you chose get, money. Get the bag. That's it. Get so my thing is, is where you gonna get it from? Well, I'm gonna get it from the people. So what about them? Oh. So the doing. whole goal is your first order of business and building a million dollar, hundred thousand dollar, ten thousand dollar, what a dollar, a ten dollar business, right? right? Is who are you gonna serve? So the whole goal is you go in with the mindset of I have to immediately take a person from A to Z mm -hmm. and make their life better. And the amount of money that you're going to make in your life is directly proportionate to the amount of problems you're going to solve. True. So if you focus on, I see these people, let me grab a niche. Don't be all over the place, mm -hmm. right? And then let me dominate a niche. Mm -hmm. Let me get really good in that niche. Let me research that niche mm -hmm. and help everybody in that niche. Mm -hmm. And if I can do that, I can dominate the niche and then master that, body it, put somebody there, mm -hmm. and then boom, focus on another niche myself after I conquer a niche. Problem is a lot of videographers, photographers, they're not sol solving a problem because they're trying to take everybody for one. Mm -hmm. And if you're taking everybody, you ain't did enough research on one niche to dominate it, solve that problem there consistently, because yeah. now you can put a system around a coach. So if you say, I'm gonna shoot coaches who like to speak and monetize from the stage, now mm -hmm. you can actually document or you can actually research that process True. come really good at it right. so that you will know what people bite on you can actually watch the videos on youtube watch the videos over the, over the platform mm -hmm. see what people react respond to from coaches who speak from the stage and do that mm -hmm. and then you can pour into somebody by saying this is where you're losing that let me come through let me document the process let me put media behind it mm -hmm. and then therefore as they grow you're gonna blow up with it and then if they're influencer in that niche then now everybody that's looking up to them gonna say i need that shooter so now what you just did is you just built the company out based on a niche, master that, bring people in, and then go to another niche. So the biggest problem is we ain't solving enough problems because we jump and ship and trying to take every dollar that's coming to us because we focus on the money mm. instead of focus on how I'm going to solve a problem. And the best way to solve that is solve it niche by niche. Dang. So. Can we take a break or we <laughs> just, we just. No, you got to, you got to, you got to let them have so it, like, man. You got to like, let them have it. I talk about niche a lot, you know, and don't nobody listen to me. So. Can you walk me through that process of like finding not, a niche. not how to find a niche, but I'm saying like when you what's the why do we need a niche? Why can't I have a lot of people coming to me saying, listen, I can do everything. Right. Like, I don't want to turn down another opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. I don't want to turn down like if I'm working. Let me shoot Lil Wayne videos. Yeah, I'm gonna go shoot do, a wedding after I wanna that. Do, I want to do everything. I want to do a Lil Wayne video. I want to do a wedding. I also you basically shoot telling food. me I need to turn down two hundred. Somebody called me for two hundred dollars to go do this, shoot Lil Wayne, whatever, right. whatever it looks like, I don't, do I have a turn down $200? Is somebody out there saying, I don't want to turn down this extra this 200 This money, I got a little, I know I, I did a wedding yesterday, so Lil Wayne called, rent they do, said that I can do whatever, something. Rent do whatever, I'm gonna I'm 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 need this bread. Nah, I mean, for survival, of course. True. But you for survive. your brand, no. Okay. Right? Okay. Now, if you need the $200, go shoot it, but don't, Put that don't post on your on, post, your, page on your page and say this is what I do. Yeah, now you're confusing everybody. Yeah, because now like survival's like oh, I gotta do gotta what I gotta that. do, but yeah. that ain't my brand. Okay, like we do stuff outside the brand all the time. We got kids, we got stuff, we got you people to feed. But I'm not gonna like put that on my page. True. I'm not gonna right. put oh, that sure. into this is what I offer. This okay. I really don't offer that. It was a one time thing. I needed a couple hundred dollars. True. Right. True. I don't offer that. Don't hit me up about that yeah. because this is who I'm here to help. For sure. So now, because you got to answer the question, am I here to help Lil Wayne and people who get married and <laughs> the food people? Now, nah, because yeah. you're all over the place. Yeah. Because now, think about this. If okay. I'm a chef right. and I go to your page right. and every piece of content that you got is the presentation of food, mm -hmm. and then I go to somebody else's page who they got the highlights of a high school basketball game mm -hmm. and then they got a wedding on there. Yeah. I'm not going to book them. I'm going to book the person who I see all the food on their page yeah. because now they already not answered my question of can they shoot my niche? True. Can they shoot? Okay. So, the, but can you walk me through the process? Like, okay, we, we, we get our niche. We're not taking the $200 people no more, whatever. We got our niche down. How do we scale that? That's really the main. That was, that's, I think that was a That's the only niche. way to actually scale, though. Okay. So, you can't scale outside of a niche. What are you What's scaling? You oh. So yeah, for okay. instance, uh, all right. So for instance, okay. uh, you can't scale outside of a niche. You can't really scale outside of a niche. Break that down. So I know what, you're saying. what I'm saying is, because uh, it's hard to body out. So I love okay. talking about building, okay. organize, document, delegate. Right. 
So now, if you shot a wedding, right? right. So the wedding process, yeah, I'm, I'm a guest. I haven't been with you shooting a wedding, sure. but you know, you go through the planning process. Mm -hmm. They aggravate you to death, sure. and then you show up. Mm -hmm. You show up earlier than everybody else that's to true. make sure that you hit the points that's that you're gonna have to hit, right? Yeah, that's and then now you gotta shoot it and be where they need you to be, and yeah. then boom, you get together, you, you dump the footage, whatever, and whatever. you shoot the ceremony, yeah. probably shoot the little dancing and everything, yeah, try yeah. to get as much as you can, okay. right? Boom. So now, if you're shooting a speaker, Mm -hmm. Right, it's gonna be probably different. It's a different process. It's a different process you because now you probably got to get back behind the scene, yeah. and you might travel with them, so you might fly with them and yep. this and that, flying mm -hmm. out with the person, getting them in the airport, getting that. Mm -hmm. It's a completely different process. So when you talk about building it out, mm -hmm. organize it, document, it, delegating. Now, if you got five different niches, imagine you hiring somebody, you got to teach them five different times. Ooh. So now. Mm -hmm when you say moving from the business to be able to grow it because you've grown yours right? right so what are you going to teach them so that one person that you teach look how long it's going to take you to master all that that's sure. the same length it's going to take you to teach somebody to master all that mm. so now if you got a niche you building out the process mm -hmm. you organize in the way it's supposed to be now if you only shoot weddings mm -hmm. you got the process down now you're going to say hey my wedding inquiry my page they fill the form out they you put know, all the request in boom they get a call they go over it right mm -hmm. you send a quote everything is there mm -hmm. you can document that process you sure. organize how it goes right mm -hmm. and then you're going to build it out mm -hmm. you're going to do it you're yeah. going to organize how it goes step by step form blah 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 mm -hmm. show up yep. you know this is what we book everything yep. right yep. and then you're going to delegate that to somebody because now they're going to say well what's my job well your job is to go through the documented process that i built out mm -hmm. they're going to go ahead and book through here mm -hmm. you're going to call them and mm -hmm. you're going to confirm this these are the price charts based on this mm -hmm. you're going to show up this is how you fly we already got that in there you show up you shoot it yeah. this is the link and then you fly back that process is already documented so you was able to delegate that mm -hmm. but then mm -hmm. imagine trying to turn around and fly them in to shoot rick ross the next day they like, hold on, you got to teach me all over yeah, again. Yeah, you got to teach me all over. Yeah, so sure. now, now I'm crazy, you know. So now when I say this, you done master that niche. Sure. And then you can scale it that way because now, boom, I can take two weddings now, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> and then I can bring somebody else in. Now I can take three weddings a day now, mm -hmm. four weddings a day, and you can handle the capacity because now you already got a system that's going to handle the weddings. Now, remember I said, you can jump niches after you master the niche. Sure. Now you got that niche down. Now if you want to go ahead and build something else out and say, mm -hmm. hey, we're going to shoot music videos and focus on that now, mm -hmm. that's different because yeah. you already mastered the niche. And mm -hmm. at, even at that point, I would keep, keep the company separate within the niche. I would just name another company and then shoot a niche. That sure. way I won't oh, saturate, I won't mess the brands up by mixing and confusing people. That's true. Cause <coughs> when I first, my first job was at, um, was at McDonald's and they didn't, mm -hmm. they had me on the, first of all, we had to watch tape. So that was already documented, right? I love the tape, bro. <laughs> but then I, I did like, I did burgers, but it didn't show me burgers, making sandwich and fries all the no, same day. No, just burgers. I just did, I was on the burgers for a minute. Yep. Until I was ready to jump on the, the yeah. sandwich making. But you had to master the burger. You were the burger man. Yeah. By the time we was on sandwich, you was happy. You like, bro, I'm I made I, it. I, I came it. up. Right. So we had to master. I had to master the burger. Right. Before I got to <clears throat> the sandwiches. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's actually a true. That's yeah, that's actually a true process. And then when you get on it, so and then that's good for two things too, because mm -hmm. you can always fill down into another position if yeah. if needed. Mm -hmm. You know, so <clears throat> that works if somebody can't. You know, yeah, so the wedding guy um, masters that, that's working for you, mm -hmm. right? Then you could probably cross train them into shooting another thing, like True. shooting Rick Ross and this and that, mm -hmm. to be able to cross over, but it wouldn't be something they permanently do though. True. So that's like the whole burger concept going into doing the fries. Mm -hmm. You learning it in the event that if you short staff here, another person from there can actually come over right. and fill in, so. So how do we, I got, I got um, since, since we on this subject, I know you were, you were, you were master at this business concept. How do we, I got two questions. Right. One, how do we get clients? And two, this could be all in the same question. One, how do we get clients? And two, how do we make $100,000 a year? The match number. They love that. How do we do they, it? Six figures. They forget about nine, nine ninety nine, nine ninety nine. dollars 99 They <laughs> yeah. just think six figures. How do we get uh, it? A hundred. How do we get a whole hundred? Done? So, all right. Get clients. How, do we get how to get clients. And what are I'm you giving good. them clients? The clients that you want to give, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So my concept is feed where you're trying to eat from. Okay. So I want to eat from clients. I want them to give me money, right? Mm -hmm. So what am I taking to them to help them give me money? Mm -hmm. And then to answer the six-figure question, the famous six-figure number, 100,000, um, so many people fail at the 100,000 mark because they don't really have a plan in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So 
scratch a hundred thousand, right? Okay. Take Sundays off. Relax. Okay. How are you gonna make three hundred dollars tomorrow? Mm. Three hundred. Three hundred dollars. Forget a hundred thousand. Okay. How are you gonna make three hundred dollars tomorrow? Why is it three hundred dollars tomorrow? Well, no. Just answer my question first. How oh. are you gonna make three hundred dollars tomorrow? So it's rhetorical, right? Not oh, you. Sure. Oh. So I need them to answer the question. True. Sure. Right. How am I gonna get three hundred dollars tomorrow? True. Sure. Forget a hundred thousand whatsoever. Right, right. The reason why I say that is because if you can master knowing how you're gonna make three hundred dollars tomorrow, you can consistently answer that. Mm -hmm. That's gonna add up to a hundred thousand, right? Mm -hmm. So my thing is find out a way to make three hundred tomorrow, mm -hmm. and then find out a way to scale that. So for instance, um, I know I can shoot content. I know I can go and, and find good vision. Okay. I live in hypothetically Montgomery, Alabama, right? Okay. And I'm passing a hundred mom and pop's restaurants, okay. right? Maybe 300 outside of, you know, all around. Yeah. And that's not even restaurants. So, hey, photography, what I guess that ain't no good. You know, shirt businesses, yeah. uh, just any kind of little business, gun and pawn shops, right? Yeah. So there's thousands of businesses in this city, right? Mm -hmm. So my thing is take a pawn shop that nobody knows about. Mm -hmm. Why don't, why aren't we taking a picture of the guns that you have? Why aren't we taking pictures of the store? Why not we doing a video commercial? I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Because like right now, the plan is, because I'm dead broke, but I got a, a equipment, is I'm gonna put a promo package together for that gun and pawn, and I'm gonna be able to sell the solution to them. So one of the things that I always tell videographers and photographers to do, Walk in and get B-roll of the place, narrate it yourself, and then send them the prom promo video and say, hey, this is yours. Another thing that videographers mm -hmm. got a good benefit of is you got really good photos, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you can go and buy a domain. Mm -hmm. So buy a domain of the pawn shop, mm -hmm. buy their domain. Put, for top, put photos on it and then put the promo video there and send them the link to their domain with a live website with their photos on there Dang. saying this is your promo <laughs> stuff. Right. Another step you can do is Dang. even link with a person from like mm. IHR Buddy or Fiverr or something like that mm. that can build out a $25 website, mm -hmm. WordPress, yep. with your photos on it. Yep. So you put $25 into a, well, maybe another 15 in the domain and all that. So sure. you put $40, right? Whatever. So you spent $40, mm -hmm. you did B-roll, you shot pictures of the guns in there, you just did it, you know, willy-nilly, mm -hmm. you ain't gonna shoot a hundred of them, yeah. like five of them, yeah. label the guns, take the prices that was on the gun, make it look a little professional, you put $50 into it, and I walk and say, hey, you ain't been shooting content, this is what you need. Now at that point, you got their domain, you got all of their stuff, sell it to them for $500 and I guarantee you they'll buy it. So think about this, out of every five that you go to, mm -hmm. what if you engage five people a day with that mindset or that concept, and one of them buy it for 750? What if the rest of them say no, right? Mm -hmm. You still owe the domain, right? Sure. And one person say yeah. So what you just did is, you spent $250 in that day yep. for four people to tell you no, but yep. one person said yes at 750 and mm -hmm. you just profited 500 a day at that point. Either way, you still have 500 Either way, you got $500 and then you just hustle that. So now you hustle that okay. and then now you document the process of yep. who you're going to engage, right? Mm -hmm. And then you um, delegate that to somebody. So now let's say if, Brandon, um, I'm gonna train you how to shoot. I'm gonna train you how to do this. I just need you to take these photos mm -hmm. and I pay you $10 an hour. I could get your little 17 year old out there, mm -hmm. hustle him for $5, five hours a day, not hustling him. But now my payroll for him is only $50, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so right. I still made $500 profit, pay him 50. Now I just made 450 from his work mm -hmm. and then another 500 from mine. So now I'm making 950. So I just scale oh. my process. And I'm doing this every day because I documented the process, bring another shooter in $10 an hour, teach them the game, and the mm. next thing you know, they're going up through the process to take mm. over the business. Yeah. And then that's how you build a, you know, that's how you go from seven figures, I mean, six figures to seven figures. So, so the six hold. figures is $300 a day. Yeah. How am I going to get my $300 today? Right. You're going to have to grind. You work for your first 100000 No, you grind and hustle for your first 100000 You grind and work for your first million. But after that million, the business got to work for you. So we got to walk through. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got to <laughs> break, break this down. So we got, we got, we got 500 from, we're going to restaurants, businesses, mm -hmm. whatever, right? We're going 500. We're going to hire somebody. We're going to pay them 50 to a hundred dollars, whatever they're doing. They, you know, every day. That's they the scaling want, side. They so weren't doing it anyway. They, they, bro, they, and they, 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 they weren't they doing it anyway. They were struggling yeah. anyway. Yep. 
So they got 100. Now we got, we still got our five because we're doing it too. Oh, we, we got our five. We good. And then they're also doing it. We're making 450, $400 to $500. So we're at You're nine. paying like $10 an hour. Even if you pay $15 an hour, right? Um, for 50. five hours a day, that's, that's yeah. $75 still, a day. So you're still making 425 You're still at 425 So yeah. now we're, we're at 925 now. That's right. it. 925 a day. And that's before you bring the third person in. So hold it, on, it, hold on. It, it, I'm going to out for that. Hold on. That's every day? Well, that's, that's still this, taking this, Sundays this, off. This, oh, yeah, you ain't no working on Sundays. You still taking Sundays off because yeah. you got to go to church. You see, that's, 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 nine, nine, that's nine, 925 a and day. And the church might pay you to shoot them. Huh, I, I, <laughs> I got to calculate this. That's for, for six days a week. That's, that's, that's six days a week. That's yep. 550 a week. Uh, yeah, that's 50. Yeah, so. Yeah, well, 55, 5,500. 50. What'd yep. I say? You said 550. You know what I meant to say. Yeah. 5,500 a week. Yep. Five grand a week. That's it. Time. Times four. Yep. It's $22,000. I'm no, gonna, just do times 52 for the year. Or just going to do... Yeah, so do 55, 50 times 52. Times 52. Boom. It's 288. So you're making a quarter mil now. That's more than a quarter mil. Yeah, so that's, that's over a quarter, quarter mil now. Yeah. yeah, that's over a quarter mil. A year. Yep. And then what about... So if I hire the second person, I could pretty much stop working. That's and exactly just let what you them do. That's I can still make 288 without me doing the work. So you making 288 with actually doing the work. So my, my thing is, is then people are gonna be like, so because you don't want to oversaturate the city. You, right, right. you know, the, 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 the poor businessman will say, let me just hire 10 people now. Sure. And do it. it's not enough work out there. You, right, you, right. So it's not that much. Because you, what you're doing is you're creating enough to last you the whole year too. Because sure. you remember, you're still in one city. Right, right. Then you got to start taking over other cities though. So we go right? from Montgomery. We do the same now we're going, let's hit Birmingham. Mm -hmm. Let's hit Atlanta. Let's okay. hit Memphis. Let's mm -hmm. hit Charlotte. Let's hit Miami. Let's hit Jacksonville. How do we get over there? We just hire somebody over there? Do we travel over that there? That same $10 hour person that you got, you got the concept now. You got a process. Right? Mm -hmm. That's not even it because you got to have the VA now, right? Virtual assistant. Okay. So that shooter, the only person you need in that city is that $10 hour person to just go take pictures and some B roll. You handling the rest, the website, yeah. Yeah. all of that, right? Mm -hmm. And that phone call that you give them when you, you know, talking to them, you can even be like, hey, I want to send you a link to your website. This is such and such. We went on here and did that for you. I'm going to tell you, like my highest paying client, right? Mm -hmm. We went and got the domain before they did. They was going viral. They was blowing up. We didn't even think about it. We went, we bought the domain and built them out. And I think I spent like $2,800 building that thing out. Yeah. When I sent them their website with a fully built out back end to where all they got to do is put their products in and it was going to ride for them, I made about $25,000 just for that. Okay. Because when you send them the link to their site, so if somebody sent you brandaddiction.com, mm -hmm. if you got it, right? Mm -hmm. and Or Brandon shot me, right? Mm -hmm. And you didn't have it. Yeah. And it's built out with every class you're going to teach. And, and, you know, it has holograms of you walking across yeah, teach. Sure. And you're like, yeah. man, what the uh, world? So now they done solved the problem that you didn't even know you had, but sure. you like, this is my page? What? That's What's the so next question you're going to ask? How can I get it? How can I get it? Yeah, I want to hey, know. What, what I got to do to get this? hologram Oh, well, yeah, yeah we I built this out. You know, we put all this work into it. We just wanted to send you this to see if you'll like it. Mm -hmm. But it has this, and this is what we can offer. So the thing is, is if the videographers and photographers give the value before they ask for the price, mm. then the value is going to actually sell it for you. So, for instance, if you saw all this, the money don't matter at that point because you sell the value first. Mm -hmm. And so now if they come and they got Brandon shot me and it's built out, even if you don't have the 20 grand they want from the site, because we ain't talking about $500 sites now. True. If you ain't have the 20 grand, you're going to get it. Because it ain't like I'm going to go daddy and paint 20 grand just for a domain. True. No, my whole brand is here so now. Automation, all stuff in the back end? So Everything how much is, is done. The, how I'm going to say, what, you got, you got, do you have a payment plan? Whatever I got to do to whatever get it, I'm going to get it. You got PayPal credit. Yep. You got whatever, um, you know. Because now what you're going to think every day after that, man, as soon as something go wrong, like, then you're going to go get a website, mm -hmm. try to build, it ain't going to, the if engine ain't going to work, if right? If I would have just purchased the joint from my man for 20000 You're going to be like, man, I could have had my site. Could have had And it. then they start sending you stuff like, all right, site going away in one month. Domain going to go up for auction in one month. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't get it, they're going to just, you know, take the site down and throw it on there and make you buy the domain for the same price. The domain is what's going to get it. Yeah. So now if you're a videographer or a photographer, the mom and pop restaurants don't have domains. Mm. Another thing, 
What if you go to the Mama Pops restaurant and look at that printout menu that they have on that black and white paper where the oxtails look like a freaking turd on them a picture? <laughs> the For real. Look crazy. And it's like, bro, crazy. what is that? Is, yeah, is that a brownie ball or something? Like, the oxtails look know. crazy. But now that videographer goes in there and that photographer goes in there and actually films the food and gets stock photos of some juicy looking oxtails mm -hmm. with, you know, just getting B-rolls of the line. Like, hey, during, between 11 o'clock and 11.30 is busy, but throughout the day they don't make no more money, yeah. right? So now it always look packed. They mm -hmm. went in there, they got the highlights, they got the good moments, and they made the restaurant look good to the public. Mm -hmm. Now you when that restaurant go to the website, they're like, oh, this is dope, because if they like it, yeah. then they're going to figure their customers are going to like it. You sure. can sell it. And then... It's a wrap at that point. So y'all got the vision as videographers and photographers to create how the world see people. Oh, yeah, that's real. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you can read a book how you want to, but that book, you ever read a book and then watch a movie, right? Yeah. For sure. When you like, read the book and then watch the movie, the movie ain't nothing like you envision yeah, in your head. Sure. You're like, oh, whole I, that's whole scene is yeah. just completely off. Yeah. Like, what in the world? I, I thought there were black people yeah. at first. Like, not just what whatever, just around. Yeah. <laughs> So now the thing is, is that's what that restaurant, that's what like that store and all that. Mm -hmm. So um, the world got to be able to see you through that videographer. That videographer going to paint the picture. But after you watch the movie, you can't unsee it and recreate that scene again. Yeah, no, that's right. So after you watch that video and that commercial, you can't unsee that. That's how you're going to see the business. Yeah. So. Boy, that's the last one, bro. God. Last one. All right. What are things that are trash? <laughs> there are people in your industry that are just trash. Trash? Mm -hmm. Man, these people selling these CPN. Mm. Uh, these people <laughs> selling trade lines and calling it like credit repair. Mm -hmm. uh, the people out there doing credit suites, mm. calling it credit repair. Mm -hmm. um, and just people that don't take the time to research the laws and just throw random information out because they heard it from other people. Mm -hmm. They trash, bro. Mm. So Maybe I, they don't know. They don't know. And so, I mean, that don't make me you ain't trash. You trash for not knowing because you ain't researched. Yeah, and you're right. out here trying to sell it. You still right? trash. Yeah, so sure. the thing is, is I think, back again, True. people are listening to the marketers mm -hmm. in my industry. Yeah. And they're not listening to the people who are actually silent on the info. Remember I told you, the marketers are going to be the experts uh, because of videography. Yeah. So I think it just goes back to the trash part of it is, you can build wealth with credit, yep. but um, so many people who fixing it are just in it for the money and not really there to like move the needle for our culture to like build True. off of credit. So I think people that do that is trash because mm -hmm. it's just a dollar to them and it's not really about helping the people. Mm. So. All right, last one. What what a um, have you had a photography last before me? Yeah, but they still my Facebook friend. So uh, what I about don't a really want to. You got a, a video picture? Nah, I had a photographer that said I'll shoot some videos. Okay. I, I did have a one dope videographer, who, um, but he wasn't my videographer. It was like, hey, let's shoot this big time video. Cause like, you know, I had a Def Jam deal and all that. Did the music with 2 chains and yeah. all them. But so it was one of those, hey, I'm gonna fly you out to Miami, put sure. you in this exotic, yeah. uh, you know, living type thing. Yeah. We're gonna shoot the video in Miami type yeah. stuff. But it's good because he okay. shoot reality TV now, like he's okay. a big deal. But it wasn't no like he was my videographer. Yeah, I'm trying to find out like anybody who was your photographer videographer before me, what did they do that was trash? But I guess you didn't have many. Well, <sighs> if you have many, then I mean, if you have many, got many well, e yeah. well, I can't even tell. Yeah, um, I can tell you. Yeah, I, some trashery I saw. Okay, <laughs> a new word, trashery, right? That you seen? Okay. Yeah. Um, so that we can know, like, if a photography like I see is they know, like, okay, let me not do that. Well, my, my biggest thing, if I didn't spend all this money getting you out here, okay. and we didn't found females, like mm -hmm. queens, whatever. I hate that female word. I just okay. said. Yeah, so we found some queens to, to be in the video, yep. right? But if the videographer is too busy trying to holler at the females, just in the video. <laughs> So I said females because I was a rapper, right? True, yeah, right. So uh, we called them females then. But now they queens. Yeah. So they was queens then. anyway. Yeah. But <clears throat> the dancers in the video, mm -hmm. <laughs> you spending too much time supposed to be shooting the video, yeah. but you trying to holler at the dancers. Oh. That's trash. That's trash. That's super trash. <laughs> How you know who's hollering at them? Like, were you guys right there ready for the scene? And no, it's missing. Oh, he was not nothing. He was missing, and you stopped the scene. My artist was there right right he ready to shoot you stopping the scene 
and because you were, you know, and, and you correcting the dancer. Yeah. But you flirt. You doing it to flirt, and y'all get like get back to business. <laughs> like this Miami flight, I flew you first class. This ain't for cheap. Sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. That's that's it. Oh man, I wonder if he, wonder if he got those digits. What if he got the number? Oh no. <laughs> I, he was working. I mean, you know, and Miami ain't cheap though. When you. We we booked man. We flew our whole team in. We talk. Yeah. You talking about like fifteen hotel rooms downtown yeah. Brickell? Oh. Yeah. You talking about five suburbans, flights? You know what I'm saying? Like food on the set and dancers just coming from Atlanta. So anyway, um, you know we got like fifteen rooms. We got people in there. We got food. We got everything on set. We probably spent about nearly a hundred grand on that on that production. Oh. And it ain't finished. It ain't even get finished. Oh, snap. Yeah, so that's what I was talking about. So you spending a lot of time trying to like holler at the females, yeah. you know, queens. Yeah, yeah for sure. But the dancers and hollering at everybody, and then you taking time out. When we taking a break, we thinking you setting the scene up, but you kicking it with us. <laughs> so yeah, that's what, it didn't get done because um, when you fly a videographer out, they treating it like a vacation or a trip mm, versus work. 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 Yeah. You trash. That was trash. <laughs> so yeah, that's and I think that's probably why you know I only that's had that one experience. Was, yeah, you was like I'm just done. A lot of people had it. They yeah. have that one or two, and they say yo, I think most of them, which is true. I think a lot of people do, are trash. I, and the biggest one too, man. And you know, even on the photo side, man, it's shooting photos and waiting a month to get them. Turnaround time is probably the number one biggest color. That is like, color. man, and then turnaround time to even pick the photos you want. Mm -hmm. And it's like, so I got to wait some more time? I'm going to tell you the truth, man. You know, probably something to get that, that, that you don't know. There are a lot of photographers and videographers that they will get the money. Yeah. And then they will like, you know, you pay, I'm a photographer. You pay right. me, you know, $300. Right. By the time you pay me $300, I don't went ahead and spent it on my bills. I'm straight now. Right. Now I don't care about your photos no more. I don't really want to do the work. Yeah, I didn't want to do the work. I didn't got paid for yeah, it. Yeah, I need three hundred dollars. So you right. gave me three hundred dollars up front. Right. I did your photos. Now it's like, yeah. I mean. But if you shoot me another three hundred, I come on out there and knock it out. Oh, I, yeah, whatever. Right, right. Because <laughs> you know, you can, actually, I got a person waiting to pay me. I need to go ahead and get this back. Cause you're taking care. Of, I ain't gonna make no money out there. Yeah. Even sure. though I done, I done made the money. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, no, I get that. That sucks, man. Ain't that crazy? Man, that's. I think that's a lot of people though. Mechanics do that too. True. But yeah. definitely, man. I think between. Yeah, that's just crazy. a person not showing up on time for shooting my photos oh, and my yeah. videos, bro. That too. That's another one. That's, that's, uh, yeah, that's a lot of little small stuff. I tell people that your, your money's not being made on, like, you're not getting paid for creativity. You're getting paid for everything else. Yeah, it's just, man, it goes back to caring about the person who's paying you. True. Not even paying you, not like a job thing. Yeah, but, but if you really take care of that customer, mm -hmm. that customer gonna take care of you. True. Like, if I did everything right by you and mm -hmm. then somebody went out bashing my name, mm -hmm. it ain't even about the money. You're going to vouch. You're going to be like, no, he For the sure. real deal. For sure. I had a great experience. Everything y'all talking about, I didn't see that side. Absolutely. And so imagine if you did a thousand people good mm -hmm. business like that yeah. and 10 people out there hating on you. You got a thousand people going at their head. For sure. That's what creates the reputation of you. But if you got a thousand people saying, oh, I feel like I got ripped off. Yeah. So now your brand, you only get one name. We just gonna change your name to Elvis or something. Yep. So <laughs> you only get one name. That's it. Well, that's a lot of gems um, dropping here today, man. We about to this. We about to go ahead and finish. Continue to enjoy Dubai, brother. I know this jump was uh, long over. I appreciate you um, just coming through, man. Just to be able to drop a uh, game for the photography yeah, videographers, man. Also appreciate you coming to speak at the Yellow Print Conference. Make sure y'all go to yellowprintconference.com and get your ticket. That's it. Okay, make sure you go to yellowprintconference.com. I think by the time we air this, it's going to be done started already. It don't matter. It don't matter. You, you should have still came. go to Yellow Print and get your ticket for next year. Get your ticket. <laughs> Let's get it. So, yeah, man, what you got coming up, bro? Um, I'm in the middle of the body boot camp right now. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm dropping the Credit Repair University. Mm -hmm. So, people listen. Remember, we stopped it. That We had thousands that graduated, right? Yeah. I'm bringing that back. I recorded over 100 modules. Yeah, that's what was lit. Step by step yeah. of everything. I took all the successful people that went and built seven figure companies, yep. studied what they did after they left the Credit Repair University, mm -hmm. right? And then added um, 
all of the modules mm -hmm. step by step that's going to take them from how we started the first or the credit repair university all the way to the end so now they would actually have something on demand to go through the program so i'm launching that to the world listen y'all if y'all don't know what the credit repair university is it was um it was something that Derek created man like i didn't even know that you could actually teach other credit repair business on like how to do business mm -hmm. i thought it was just a whole bunch of credit repair people and i'm like man this dude right here is the master <laughs> the credit repair the, it's, uh, it was it was crazy i've mm -hmm. never seen it like it so listen y'all um and that being said man it's my guy Derek harper seeing y'all miss y'all follow him on instagram facebook um facebook is his um it's his thing right love but it. ig he doing his thing on ig too man so y'all make sure y'all go follow my brother man yeah. that being said um y'all respect the shot i respect the shoot <laughs> <laughs>